What's up, you guys? I'm Carson Rouse, back with Business Buzz, where we focus on business, entrepreneurship, and investing. Today, I'm gonna be going through the three best blue chip stocks for you to invest. Any good, well-diversified portfolio should definitely have some stocks in there that have a very high market cap and are leaders within their industry. These well-known stocks are usually referred to as blue chip stocks and are stocks that any average Joe off the street would recognize. It doesn't matter if you're a Wall Street trader or some janitor somewhere, you know these stocks. To be considered a blue chip stock, you're gonna have to have a market cap within the hundreds of billions of dollars, but even just being large cap does not automatically render you blue chip. You need to have a good reputation. You need to have some pizzazz to your name. For example, Tesla is a very large high market cap company with a market cap of around $150 billion. However, they're not profitable. There's a lot of controversy surrounding them. And generally the public is just not total approval of them yet. So generally I wouldn't say that they are a blue chip stock quite yet. I was very sad to see that. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. To make it simple, I'm only gonna be considering stocks that are within the Dow Jones. A lot of investors consider the stocks within the Dow Jones as the only true blue chip stocks anyway. Also, be ready for the number two stock that I'll be talking about. It is my personal favorite on this list and I own many shares of it. So be ready for number two. Also, make sure you guys go down and like this video if you enjoy our content and if you're excited for the video, please like. Number one, McDonald's. The food industry is arguably one of the safest and just greatest sectors of the market to put your money into. McDonald's has really been the cream of the crop for the fast food industry for a long time due to their high profit margins, great management team, and honestly the most well-known brand on the planet. They employ more than 200,000 people and have a $140 billion market cap. They also so happen to have the most creepiest mascot of all time in Ronald McDonald. But let's dig a little deeper and to see why I think McDonald's is a great must have buy in your portfolio. Let's get into their business model. McDonald's was one of the first restaurants to really popularize the franchise business model. They themselves do not actually own most of their locations. Instead, they buy up land and physical properties that they then lease out to different individuals to run their own locations. The corporation of McDonald's makes money from franchise fees, percentages of the profits within the restaurants, and of course, by leasing. It's very helpful to just see McDonald's as a real estate company above all. If you wanna learn more about its founding, I would watch a movie called The Founder. According to McDonald's own website, over 80% of their locations are owned by individuals, individual businessmen and women who run the locations. In the United States, that percentage is actually closer to 90%. In these 38,000 locations, they serve plenty of different food products, such as burgers, milkshakes, and chicky nuggies. Now let's get into some recent news and stock movement. So McDonald's revenues have actually been slightly declining the past few years. A lot of people attribute this to Americans and other first world countries becoming more health conscious about what they eat. And of course, McDonald's is kind of known for their unhealthy choices. They also have some great competition. Their biggest probably being Chick-fil-A. They are actually the fast food chain that generates the most revenue and were voted America's favorite fast food. However, the management over at McDonald's is very well aware of all of this that's happening, and they created something known as the Velocity Growth Plan to get McDonald's back on track. You may have noticed in the past few years that McDonald's physical locations look a little different. Their locations look modernized 10 years into the future, and they've even introduced kiosks in many of their locations for customers to order on and even pay through. They've also partnered with different food delivery services like Grubhub and DoorDash, and they advertise that a lot. They really push the fact that they deliver. Before the whole pandemic, this really all seemed to be working. In fact, their comparative store sales rose to 7.2% by February. Also, their delivery revenues reached billions of dollars annually. However, of course, after the virus, most of their restaurants did not offer dine-in availabilities, and a lot of their restaurants even just closed. So their revenues went down and their stock price showed it. Since their March lows of around $137 a share, they're now risen back up to around $186 per share. But this is still about $30 lower than the stock was trading at back in February. But now let's get into some valuation and financials. 
They have a very strong dividend right now of about 2.5%. What that means is that if you invest $1,000 in a McDonald's stock, you will get about $25 in cash every year. They've also been increasing this dividend for 43 years, making McDonald's a dividend king. In their December 2019's earnings report, their revenues actually increased 3.6% year over year, which is something they haven't seen in a few years. Also, their quarterly net income was over $1.5 billion. However, what stuck out to me the most on their most recent earnings report was the amount of cash they have on hand. It seemed as though that these long-standing companies that have great management are holding a lot of cash right now, and it's good to see McDonald's following that trend. They have over $5 billion cash on hand, up from under $1 billion the quarter before, and I also compared McDonald's to a few of their competitors, and my opinion remains strong on buying this stock. Compared to Wendy's and Yum! Brand, which owns KFC and Taco Bell, they have a lower forward PE than any of them. McDonald's also has ridiculous net margins of around 27%. Number two, Cisco. Cisco is one of the most largest and trusted tech companies in the world and could be a major beneficiary of the rise in cybersecurity. Its business model of selling hardware like switches and routers, mostly to companies, is slowing a bit, but a lot of that has to do with them transferring over to more software-based products. All right, now let's get into their business model. Again, for years, Cisco has been much more of a hardware company, but they plan to profit much more from software in the future. They sell their products that are mostly network and communication based to different enterprises, companies, service providers, and schools. Currently, about a third of their total revenue comes from selling software, but this has increased since 2017, where it was only accounting for about 22%, and this number should only increase in the coming years. They've also began creating way more cybersecurity products throughout the years, and they have an emphasis on educating people about the importance of cybersecurity. From someone who sees a lot of growth ahead in the cybersecurity industry, this is all great to see. In fact, the global cybersecurity market is expected to grow around 10% every single year in the next few years, so don't just take my word for it. Many investors also see Cisco as a major beneficiary of the growing 5G networks. Let's get into some recent news and stock movement. Recently, Cisco confirmed their intent to purchase a cybersecurity company worth $1 billion called Thousand Eyes. This was just a few days ago, and since then, their stock has increased over 5%. They've also made a few other big software company purchases and acquisitions throughout the years, and that's just bringing more and more revenue to them. A lot of these acquisitions have been cybersecurity based, meaning a lot of investors now consider Cisco an official cybersecurity stock. Cisco is even held in the two major cybersecurity ETFs. The stock is down about 7% though from this time last year. Obviously a lot of that is due to the virus, but they've also had some pretty underwhelming revenue growth in the last few years. But now let's really get into their valuation and financials. Because they sell mostly to large corporations, you might not realize just how large a company Cisco is. In fact, their market cap exceeds $200 billion. They also have one of the higher dividend yields in the Dow Jones, ranging around 3%. They pay about half of their earnings per share back to their investors through dividends, which is very generous, but it also shows they have a lot of room to grow. So again, even before this virus, their revenues just weren't doing great. In fact, they were a little lower than last year. But a lot of this may be due to the fact that they are shifting their business model almost completely on its head, all right? So it might take a while for the company to really adjust. Of course, Cisco is also always focused on growing their cash on hand, which of course is used in acquiring new companies. But even with all this hype surrounding Cisco and all the industries that they're getting their feet wet in, 5G, cybersecurity, their PE ratio is still a very fair 16. This is pretty good for their industry, and I even compared their stock to other competitors within their industry, such as Juniper Networks and Microsoft. Believe it or not, that 3% dividend was actually the main thing that kept them lagging behind their competitors. Microsoft and Juniper Networks and the other ones that I compared had pretty high dividends. But all of their other valuation metrics either beat out their rivals or at least were close to them. Before we get into number three, if you made it this far into this long video, I really appreciate it and you're obviously enjoying this. So make sure you guys go down and give us a like and subscribe to join this awesome growing community. Number three, JP Morgan Chase. 
To be honest, on this channel, I don't talk a whole lot about financial stocks, the whole financial sector of the market. And I'll just be straight up honest with you guys. It's because I don't fully understand how the business works. For this reason, I may not go into as much depth when it comes to the stock, but as a customer of Chase, I thought that if I had to invest in one bank, it would be this one. I honestly love Chase's app, and I believe that their online integration is pretty solid. They also have a great reputation and are a very large company of nearly $300 billion. Let's get straight in to their business model. Chase Bank makes its money through three different segments. Number one is, of course, their banking that they do with both consumers and businesses. Through this, they can make money through depositing, investing, cash management, and much more, even through payment options with businesses. Another segment of theirs that they make money is through their card and commerce solutions. Chase makes a lot of their revenue through credit cards that they offer to people and different small businesses. They even offer loan programs such as student loans that can help take care of you poor saps. Lastly, they of course make money from mortgage banking, where they make money when people take out a mortgage on their home. But now let's get into some recent news. Banks were hit pretty bad from the virus and have had some real trouble recovering, and Chase is a prime example. The stock is still down 30% from February, selling for just $97 a share. But a lot of the reason that they're having trouble recovering may be due to the Fed cuts. This caused regular savings accounts and different money market funds that Chase offers to be virtually worthless. In fact, Chase was actually doing pretty good revenues before this all happened. They were doing around $27 billion a quarter, but since this virus in their last earnings report, they did under 20. Now let's get into some valuation measures and financials. Chase actually sports the largest dividend yield on this list, with a yield of around 3.7% that they have been growing since the recession. So if you were able to invest a million dollars into this stock, you could live passively through the dividends of around $37,000 a year. I actually compared their bank and their stock with other banks like Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and Bank of America. Chase does slightly have the worst price to book and PE ratio of the five that I compared it to. However, I feel secure in this stock knowing just how large of a company they are. And honestly, their ratios are not far off from their competition. They also have one of the better dividend yields and a very high institutional ownership percentage, which always makes me feel secure. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you put some of these stocks into your portfolio. You got to have some blue chip stocks in your portfolio if you want to be a successful investor. Also, if you want to be a successful investor, subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. I will see you guys next time.